Good day, everyone. So we're going to have the last class of virology. So let's have 10 minute lecture before we get into the MCQs. So the general knowledge, yes, what should you know? So what is like a virion? So a, a virion is a complete virus. So virus is, you know, vir you can see virus and virion is a synonym, yes? It's the same thing, but we mostly use virion when it's a new virus that has been made. Capsid, nuclear capsid, capsomeres, what are these? I will explain very soon. So if you look at this picture of a virus, you can see the virus has the nucleic acid, which is surrounded by individual what capsomere, and multiple capsomere will make a capsid. So sometimes they like to call this a nucleocapsid, meaning that the capsid is enclosing a nucleic acid, which could be DNA, RNA, double-stranded DNA, so on and so forth. Then this capsid, depending on whether the virus is enveloped or non-enveloped, if there's an envelope surrounding this capsid, as you can see, the nuclear capsid, we known as an envelope virus. But if there's no capsid, sorry, if there's no envelope, it's been known as a non-envelope virus. Now, there are different structures of virus. Yes, a virus can be cubic shape. As you can see, yes, a cubic shape. It can be helica in structure. So you can see why it looks like helica in structure. Or it can be complex. This is a what? This is a, okay, this is a bacteriophage. Yes, you can see a bacteriophage. So a bacteriophage is, this is a bac uh, the phage we're talking about. I told you can infect um, bacteria here. Yes. So you can see what it looks like. And this should be an example of a complex uh, virus. Now, remember that viruses are not living structures. Yes, they need to be in a living organism, whether bacteria or human being or an animal or plants to be able to survive. OK, now that we're done with that, let's start with the lecture. So these are the viruses you need to know for croc. Yes, it's not a lot for viruses because viruses mostly have the same symptoms, but there are some thin, minute or tiny differences that separate it. So let's start with HIV. Everybody knows HIV, yes. So HIV is better into HIV-1 and HIV-2. So HIV-1 is the most common. When we refer to HIV, we're mostly talking about HIV-1. Then HIV-2 is rare, it's mostly found in South Africa, yes, but just focus on HIV-1. Now HIV-1 mostly affects cells that contain CD4 receptors, such as T cells, especially T cells. You have a little CD4 receptor, your dead you can macrophage cell. But if Croc asks you which cells are affected by HIV, please choose T cells, because T cell has a lot of the CD4 receptors. How does it work? So note here, I wrote that HIV uses its glycoproteins. Okay, what are glycoproteins? Yes. Now, remember I told you that in this presentation, if it's enveloped, for example, if it's enveloped, yes, they can be proteins or antigens, yes, on the envelope, and these are known as glycoproteins. So the glycoprotein 120 and glycoprotein 41. Please, Croc, if you see glycoprotein 41 and glycoprotein 120, it's HIV they're talking about. What, why am I telling you this? Because look, this is a human. You can see that this is a T cell, a CD4 cell. Yes, and you can see that this is the CD4 receptor of the T cell. And you can see that the glycoprotein 120 of the virus will bind to the CD4 receptors. Now, this is very important, but HIV cannot just enter yet. It needs something known as the co-receptors. Now, if you look here, the co-receptors include um, CXCR4 and CCR5, yes, and that is why you hear, um, you have seen the news where they talk about people who are immune in South Africa, they are immune to HIV. They are not, they are immune to HIV because they don't have this receptor CXCR4 or CCR5 because when GP120 binds to the CD4 receptor, it needs to also bind to this uh, CXCR4 or CCR5. And people who lack this, um, HIV cannot penetrate their cell. So those are the people that are immune. So it's matter to you for you to know that HIV is a retrovirus. What do I mean by say retrovirus? Because it consists of an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Yes, we know that transcription is DNA to mRNA. Reverse transcription will be what RNA to DNA. So what happens is it's um the HIV molecule has RNA. Yes, but your um the virus cannot inject RNA into the genetic makeup of the human. You know, example, the, TDs, the T cells um, genes. So what it does is when HIV penetrates into the 
T cells, it will use its reverse transcriptase to change that um, RNA to DNA. Then that DNA will enter into the uh, genetic makeup of the T cell. Now, anytime there's an immune response, what happens? T cell will want to proliferate, yes, and they want to increase in number. If they proliferate, it means they will divide their chromosome. So the body will be trying to make more T cells at the same time making more what HIV virus. But what I told you that it's not the HIV that kills the person. What kills the person? Okay, before we talk about that, let's talk about the transmission. Yes, everybody knows the transmission: sexual intercourse, blood, or vertical from mother to child. Now, what is AIDS? This is the main thing. Now, because there's now AIDS occur. Very important point: when your T cells are less than two hundred, two hundred what? Less than two hundred per milli a cube of blood in number. And then because of that, you cannot um, coordinate an immune response. So there'll be recurrent bacterial infection, pneumocystic pneumonia, fungal infection such as candidiasis, and tumor such as Kaposi sarcoma. And is it that the pneumonia or the candida? Yes, that will kill this patient. The diagnostics, so we have the normal PCR test. I'm mostly used to check the antigen, yes, the HIV particles, the antigen or the um, nucleic acid, yes, the RNA itself. The Western boat is a very unique, is a, a very unique test to check for your the antibodies that your body makes. Okay, so we've talked about that. So before I move on to the next lectures, I want to quickly show you classifications of viruses. So what you need to focus on for CROC is uh, sometimes you can just know it just in case they want to ask you, but viruses are classified, yes. We have adenovirus, viridae family consists of adenovirus type 1 to type 5, yes. Then what you should focus on, please, herpes viridae family. Now, herpes viridae family, if you look here, are made up of, you can see the family, herpes viridae 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But it's important for you know, to know that herpes simplex virus 1, which is the oral herpes, is this virus, HHV1. Then HHV2 is also herpes simplex virus 2, but this is the genital herpes, genital. Then HHV3 is chicken pox, also known as varicera zoster virus. I will explain this more as we move on. HHV4 is Epstein-Barr virus. HHV5 is Agometalo virus. HHV6 is, um, I think this is rubella. I'm not sure. Um, I think, let me see. Okay, it's not rubella, please. It is... It's come okay. Cork will not ask you HHV6, but it's Rosiolo virus, something like that. But focus on HHV1 and HHV5 to five years. Then HHV6 are viruses that can induce or cause Kaposi sarcoma. Yes, you don't need to know about it, just know it can cause it. Then the next group of viruses we need to talk about will be the Picona viridae. As the name implied, there are viruses that Cork asks you which of these viruses are the, the most tiny. You have to choose a Picona virus. Vir um, a picona viridae family virus, number one, enterovirus. Enterovirus are mostly um, gotten fika oral, yes, entero, like intestine, fika oral. Examples, polio. Oh, look, fika oral. You see what I'm talking about, yes? So it's mostly gotten um, fika oral, yes, coxaxi A and coxaxi B. Croc will not ask you in detail, but you should just know the difference. Coxaxi A affects skeletal and heart muscles, why coxsackie B affect all tissues. The next thing you need to know is will be the uh, and, um, will be the rhinovirus. The rhinovirus, uh, if Croc tells you a virus that looks like a wheel, wheel shape, wheel, W-H-E-E-L, rhinoviruses, that's what Croc will really focus on. The next one we need to talk about would be paramyxoviruses. So paramyxoviruses are large helical viruses in shape. Yes, they are large, very large, and they are helical in shape. Look at the classification. We have mumps, measles. Why did they write rubella? We have measles, then we have German measles, which is rubella. Okay, I'll check that. But uh, we have, focus on this, we have mumps, very important, respiratory syncytial virus. We have para-influenza virus, not influenza. Now, para-influenza is different from influenza. Both are viruses, okay. Now, hemophilus influenza is a bacteria. Okay, good. So let me quickly check for. Okay, so measles, measles, uh, rubella, and mumps, MMR, all of them are paramyxoviruses and respiratory syncytial virus. Then the next one we need to talk about would be, okay, that, then that's all. So please, um, do, you, do you really need to know which viruses is DNA, which viruses are RNA? No, because it's a lot of viruses, it doesn't make sense. 
Then the next thing, okay, now let's go back to the next part of the lecture. Yes, let's quickly finish everything. So I've talked about that. Then hepatitis, what is the family of hepatitis? We should also know the family of hepatitis too. Hepatitis falls under, under what? Enterovirus. Yes, but only, don't worry, Croc is not going to ask you this. <laughs> let's just get into it. What we call acid hepatitis is very important. We have five types of hepatitis. Look here. Now we have A, B, C, D, E. A and E, fika aura. Look, a fika aura transmission. B and C are blood, fluid, sexual intercourse. Yes, both of them are very deadly. Now, I like to think, now, hepatitis B is mostly um, fluid in general, blood, saliva, so on and so forth. But hepatitis C is just blood, please, okay? I don't, it's not um, saliva, it's just blood. Now, hepatitis D can only um, replicate in the presence of hepatitis B. Okay, now that you know that, what else you need to know? We need to know about the respiratory syncytial virus. Now, the respiratory syncytial virus is the number one cause of bronchiolitis. I don't know if everyone can see. It's the number one cause of bronchiolitis. Yes, bronchiolitis is mostly seen in children. Yes, you are never going to hear bronchiolitis in an adult. When, you know, we have the bronchi and bronchioles. Um, bronchioles. Bronchioles are mostly in children and bronchi are mostly in adults. Yes, the difference is just the size. So because children are very small, we call it bron bronchioles because they're very tiny. But when somebody, when a child grows up, when when the person's an adult, we don't call it bronchioles because it's normal, it's now the normal size of a bronchi. So when you hear bronchiolitis, which is a combination of the bronchioles, they're mostly referring to a child. And when we hear bronchitis, that's a combination of the bronchi, we're mostly referring to an adult. Okay. What is important in respiratory syncytial virus? Respiratory syncytial virus will cause the formation of syncytial giant cells. It will cause the respiratory cells to merge together to form giant cells. Transmission is through aerosol, that's respiratory droplets. It can also be transmitted through fomites, that is non-alive structures like the bed, table, yes, if a, a, a patient touches it and puts the hand in their nose. The next virus we need to talk about will be infectious mononucleosis. Infectious mononucleosis are caused by Mostly 90% Epstein Barr virus. Ikrok talks about infection mononucleosis, choose Epstein Barr virus. But 10% can be caused by cyclo, um, CMV, cyclomegalovirus. Yes, and I think this is the virus. If the Ikrok tells you about OI and you're referring to a virus, please, cytomegalovirus. Now, transmission is through saliva. That's why they call this as the kissing disease. Yes, what is the kissing bug? The kissing bug is the triatoma bug, which spreads Chagas disease, which is American trypanomyiasis, American sleeping sickness. Since a fly spreads um, trypanomyiasis, but the word African sleeping sickness. Okay, now ev almost everybody has this virus in their body, yes, but everyone is asymptomatic. If anybody shows signs and symptoms, maybe due to immune suppression, so on and so forth, the disease is known as, or the, is known as mono. And uh, fever, pharyngitis, atypical lymphocytosis, Croc will not ask you about the symptoms, yes. But what is the diagnosis? Very important is to be IgM antibodies to Epstein Barr virus. Now, influenza virus, please, influenza virus is very into what? A, B, C. Now, influenza viruses. Okay, so papil papilloma viridae, everyone knows that is the human papilloma virus, yes, good. Okay, thank God. Orthomyxoviridae, orthomyxoviridae will be influenza A, B, C. Okay, now that we know that, let's move. Then Ebola is filoviridae. You don't really need to know much of this, yes, but just the important one. So let's move on. Now, we have three types of influenza A, B, C, but we'll focus on A because A is the one that mostly causes issues, yes. Now, it consists of a segment of RNA, spike protein known as hemagglutinin and neuronamidase. Look here. Now, influenza. So you can look at this beautiful picture of influenza. Yes, I don't know if it's clear. Let me look for a clearer picture. Yes. So we have the hemagglutinin and neuro. Let me show you the spelling in case someone wants to know the spelling. Yes. As you can see, the spelling. Yes. Hemagglutinin and neuro. 
neuro remedies. Uh, why am I telling you this? Please focus on this because um, the reason why there's a, um, it's so hard to find a vaccine or why there's a lot of outbreak is because of two things, antigenic, antigenic drifts and antigenic shifts. Now, before I talk about that, I want you to know that hemagglutinin is it's, uh, it's to clump a lot of um, red blood cells. Why neuraminidase helps to helps in the release of the virion, so the newly formed virus. What do I mean by this? Look here. Now, normally, what happens is uh, I don't know if you can see. You can see that after the virus has injected itself, yes, this is the virus particles that have been made. Now, you can see that the virus takes part of the membrane of the host cell. If you observe, yes, this is known as body. and then it would it, the new virion will be released. Now, of course, because it took part of the host uh, membrane, um, our immune cell temporarily cannot attack this virus initially, but this virus also cannot infect other cells. So there'll be a brief period where it can um, evade our immune cells. And then before it can infect another cell, neural minidase have to come and remove that layer of host cell membrane. That's just the function. Why am I spending so much time talking about this? Because if you look here, or if you are the type that follow the news, you've heard about the swine flu and the avian flu. Both of them are caused by influenza A virus. Uh, look at their serotypes, H, H5N1. Yes, we have so many. We have hemagglutinin 1 to 16, but 1 to 5 is the most you know, deadly. And we have neural immunities, I think 1 to 5, and then 1 to 3 is the most deadly. Yes. So um, when it is the hemagglutinin 1 and neural immunities 1, swine flu, I hope you get it. When it's hemagglutinin 5, and there are this one is avian flu. That's just what I'm telling you. Then transmission aerosol, it will be budding. But if it's a bacteria, if it's sorry, if it's a virus that when the virus wants to be released, yes, they lyse the cell. It's known as lysis. But if they take part of the membrane, it's known as budding. Please, we don't use antibiotics to treat viral infection. Okay. Okay, antigenic drift and shift. That's what I remembered. Now, antigenic drift means that the virus is, is is gradual change of mutation. So maybe the initially this virus was H1N1, then the virus will change to H1N2. So it's a gradual change, yes. But antigenic shifts occur when there's a very sudden change, and we mostly see it when, for example, a patient was um, infected with influenza A, and a patient was influenced. Say influenza. A patient was infected with influenza A, and then the patient was at the same time was affected with coronavirus. Now, both viruses can infect that a particular cell. Now, what can happen is because um, there's no apparatus to for the virus to separate the DNA and say, okay, this is only influenza. You can see from this photo I showed you here, you can see the way the virus, the particles are just you know freely. So imagine if coronavirus was also in, 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 has already infected the cell. What happened is there can be mixing of the DNA of influenza and coronavirus, and that is antigenic shift, and that is more deadly. That gives virus the ability sometimes to be able to jump from animal to humans because there are some viruses that normally cannot infect um, humans, but due to antigenic shift, they can be able to infect humans and cause serious disease. So, so that's antigenic shift. Okay. And angenic shift only occurs in influenza A viruses. That's why influenza A causes a lot of um, outbreaks. Okay. Next thing we need to talk about would be chickenpox. So chickenpox, everyone knows, is varicella zoster virus. Yes. Now, what is shingles? Now, chickenpox is the first time a child is infected in a child age. What happened is after the body has fight. After the body has, you know, won this um, war against this virus, what happened is some varicella zoster virus can reside and lay dormant in the trigeminal ganglion, and due to maybe stress or suppression of immunity, they can reactivate, and that is known as what shingles. Now, the important thing you note for you that you do not use aspirin to treat a child that has fever, maybe due to chickenpox, you don't give a child aspirin because it can cause what? Ray syndrome. If you want to know more about Ray syndrome, maybe after the lecture, you can just check a video on it. Yes, it's a complication. Okay, that's all. Okay, no, I jumped. I didn't do um, MMR, measles, rubella, and mumps. Measles, we've talked about this, yes, in pattern morphology. They talk about complex spots, fever, rash, cough. So measles 
focus on coplic spots. What are coplic spots? Coplic spots are white spots on the mucous membrane, yes, in the mouth, especially uh, near the region of the molars, yes, coplic spots. Then mums, please, mums, the crocodile don't talk about it. They talk about it mostly in, uh, it cause inflammation of the parotid gland and in a male child, inflammation of the testes and epididymis, known as orchitis and epididymitis. Rubella is also known as what German measles. It's quite a good question about rubella. Yes, or German measles. They mostly talk about it regarding torch infections. So torch infections are infections that uh, causes um, tetrogenic or congenital defects in children. Yes, so rubella is the R in torch infection. So they'll talk about it relating to a pregnant woman got rubella and a child has congenital issues. Which of these torch infection causes it? You choose R, which will be rubella. So let's look at the remaining torch infections. So everyone knows about toxoplasma gondii. Yes, we talked about toxoplasma gondii. Yes, I told you that toxoplasma gondii that is has to do with the cat. So others are like hepatitis B or other diseases that we don't know about. Rubella, as you can see, German measles, cyclomegalovirus. Yes, but I told you that most people are asymptomatic. Then the last one will be what herpes simplex virus. Okay. Yes. Viral inclusion bodies. This is very important because once you see this, you know your answers. So viral inclusion bodies, yes, when virus infect cells, they can leave something known as inclusion bodies. So if they are inside the cytoplasm, known as intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. If they are in the nucleus, intranuclear viral inclusion bodies. Now, if the clock tells you that when they found Henderson, Peterson bodies, it will be this, yes? If it's negri bodies, please, negri bodies very important, rabies, yes? You can see the read the other list as you can see. Car acidophilic cowdry type A, please will be what uh, chickenpox, herpes virus, angular fever. Acidophilic cowdry type B will be polio virus, and basophilic cowdry type A, adenovirus, so on and so forth. Observe that you don't have basophilic cowdry type A. Okay, so you take a screenshot. Yes, then another one is this. You can see that measles have a special one known as what Wathkin. You can see the name, right? And it can be found in both the nucleus and cytoplasm. Now, you can see that smallpox is what, you're right, guanary bodies. You can see that CMV, to talk about what, O, eyes, yellow fever, you can see Torres body. These are other ones you can put them in your mind. So what is positive strand and negative strand um, RNA virus? Now, if the croc, a croc will not ask you, but just to know, neg um, negative strand RNA virus means that when they enter into the um, into the cell, they cannot be transcribed immediately. Pos positive strand RNA can be transcribed immediately to their proteins, their glycoproteins, but negative strand RNA cannot be transcribed immediately. They have to undergo special changes um, by the enzyme RNA polymerase. 